I praise the Lord that during this COVID time, we just had the strongest attendances and God is blessed. And we had people outside sitting in their cars or others that have chosen to be in the auditorium. And it's just an honor to see. And then many that are on Facebook as well. I believe the church has grown. In fact, I know that the offerings have grown. And here's what I've decided is if I'm going to use a dear phrase from my friend C.K. White down in Laurel, Delaware. If the offerings start to go back down, then we'll all have to go out to our cars again, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I just appreciate all that you've done, keeping That's that up. Fine. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the night. Thank you for Brother Gary as he's getting ready here pretty soon to come. And I pray, Lord, that you bless us. You give us the announcements. You give us understanding for the evening, the way that we're moving forward in you. Lord, our hearts are yearning to hear your word tonight. Father, we want to hear a true word, dear Lord, from you. And these great truths about the will of God, knowing what direction to go in with the will of God. I'm just asking, Father, tonight that you'll use it in our hearts in a big way. And I'll thank you for that. I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brother Gary? Amen. Amen. All right. By the way, some announcements. And, uh, of course, I have a mask. And uh, I don't have it on that. But if you feel safe, you can be where you're at. If you want to social distance, we understand. Just be careful. And uh, I do have my mask. It is in my pew. I was wearing it a few minutes ago. It's kind of ripped it off. But I'm talking to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, all right, mission, missionary letters for the Wag, what the Wag, Wagers, Wagers, there we go, Mason, are on the back table, please, please, on your way out tonight. I know by the time we get done with singing and preaching or teaching or preaching and everything's going on, we'll probably forget, but I want to encourage you, please grab one, take it home, and uh, you can send out, if you want to, you can send out to encourage and note to them, just to be a Grab one, take it, read it, and you'll be blessed by it. Um, Tuesday, Thursday, or Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, tomorrow night's Thursday. Who will be willing to get some water and help Brother Jr. Where's Brother Jr.? Where is he? Oh, he's back here. He's standing up, and I'm looking right dead out. He can't see him. Brother Jr. Who would be willing to help him with the water? Uh, get things set up for that tomorrow night, six o'clock, in Walmart parking lot. We'll have the tracks. And talking to get some witnesses done here at Walmart uh, for as long as we can until they get tired of us and they get out. But it's okay. <laughs> we'll just go back. We'll just try again and go back. It's Walmart. It's all right. Hey, as long as somebody gets saved, it's all that. Right. Now, we do have some tracks here. Um, there's some here, and there's some in the back. I guess there's still some in the back there. Grab some tracks. Take with you. All right. Is there a few guys that would come and grab these and just go throughout? And anybody that will take 10 or 12, 14 of them, they have the VBS flyer in them, okay? Oh, yeah. Get those out to the kids and everything. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Good. 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 They had an envelope. They did bottles last year. Good and that. some of them got turned in. Some of them did very well. Uh, I seen not too long ago that somebody brought one in full. Hey, they had yeah. an for the pregnancy center. If you want one of them, they're due August tonight. August tonight. Hey, man. That's up on screen. Due August tonight. Uh, let's see. What else we got here? We got some extra gifts up here. If you know somebody has some need and want to want to take some of these gifts, if they have a little, little child, a little boy, a little girl, and you want to take what we have and take them out and give them to somebody that might need something, be a blessing. Take them. Take those gifts. Um, what else do we have here? Let's see. Flowers. Uh, Men's meeting. Men's meeting. There we go. Men's meeting. <laughs> First Saturday of the month. <laughs> this Saturday. All right. This if you want to come, come on. That is the time, John. 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. All right. If you have any other questions for John, he's sitting back in the town booth. Uh, got any questions for that? Come. We have the ladies meeting every third.
Saturday of the month. And that's only at 12 o'clock, right? Right. Yeah. All right. I'm getting that down. So we have our, we have pretty much everything we see here. Um, oh, BBS. Yeah. We have a meeting. The yeah. 20, Tonight. 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 Right after the service, the BBS meeting. And we have a sign-up sheet for, for the BBS. If you want to sign up, come on. Thank you. Yeah. Well, let's do it. Tell you what, Tom, is that okay to do this, sir? Sure, yeah. Hand it down. Right. Yeah, let All people right. know. Check it out if you got a pen. Oh, by the way, JR, get it. Get a couple of guys and get paper and pens to everybody because tonight's lesson is awesome, man. You want to take that? Woo! It's going to be good. Hey, man. Awesome. Woo! Now, I think there's something. If the, tomorrow night with the visitation, uh, with the waters and stuff, if you have coolers or do you. Or is there, we got them. Okay, we got some cool. help with JR. Just need some help with JR getting everything set up, getting nice and wherever you do with them. But, Putting the waters on ice, making it nice and cold. Please, please be here for that. Um, we'll go out and try to get, have a good time, and see if we can uh, talk to a few people there before we get very that one. You know, I, I've been to Walmart, I've been kicked out, but I've never been kicked out of this Walmart. We have getting tracked out. Too much. Getting tracked. Scared tracked out. Witnessing the people. They see them. The cameras. What is this message just in the parking lot?
didn't know how private the issue was with Miss Magenis, but it seems that she's been pretty open with folks. And so I'm going to go ahead and tell you what's going on with Holly. Uh, she has uh, some cancer that has shown up. And we need to be in prayer for her. We need to be in prayer for her and Al. Al also has had some issues with losing blood in recent days. His hemoglobin count has gone down, and it may be that he needs to have uh, some kind of transfusion. Barb? They gave him one uh, yesterday. They gave him one yesterday. He's and he's feeling better today. Okay, good. Praise the Lord for that. But keep Polly in your prayer. Keep Jay Hornsby and Sharon in prayer. Uh, I talked to Sharon today. I thought maybe she might be here tonight. Didn't work out, apparently. And so keep her in prayer. Jay is home now, okay? Uh, but that's without a nurse, without hospice. I'm not sure why. Uh, they just feel that perhaps it's not needed. I'm not sure what's going on. You keep him in prayer. And then continue to pray for the family of Connie Peterson. Uh, she was a part of this church. For a good long while, from what I understand, is that correct? I saw her picture in the uh, directory. Uh, Earl told me some about uh, her, but I don't know a lot. I thought I knew her. I felt so bad about that day. Uh, but I am going to be doing her funeral tomorrow night at 6 o'clock and 7 o'clock for the viewings, correct? And so I think right after that is probably when the funeral will be. 6 o'clock. 7 o'clock service. We had 6 o'clock visitation, 7 o'clock service. It's at Cranston Funeral Home. If you'd like to come and show your support for the family, and uh, I'm going to be asking that the Lord give me wisdom. I've not been able to talk to Becky in recent days, and so I'm not sure exactly how she wants it to go, but it seems to me that I'm going to have some liberty because of that. I think maybe that's her plan, is just to let me do it. And so we'll see how that works. Keep that in prayer. All right, other requests to add to these. Yes, go ahead. My niece, Lillian, it looks like she's worse. She's probably going to stay home tomorrow and not just for the one day, it looks like. Okay, my dear. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to keep my cousin. Your cousin, yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, go right ahead. Nori, if you don't know Nori, get to know her. She's a sweet. Go ahead. Um, pray for our law enforcement officers. Yes. The fire department, because I, I just said a lot of the fire departments are getting a lot of heck about the whole, about all this mess that's been going on with the riots. And the okay. Day. You know it. You know it. Does anybody know where Connie and Alan Russell are tonight? I expected to see him. I don't know if something happened to him. If somebody, nobody has heard. Okay, and Peggy Banks also. I know that she's dealing with her grandson, but that may be part of the reason. So keep Peggy Banks in prayer. Keep Alan and Connie in prayer. The Atkins as well. There's several that aren't here. This is a good crowd, though, man. Praise the Lord. But yeah. keep those in prayer that aren't. Okay, keep those in prayer that aren't. Okay, anybody else? Rich. Yeah, we got a guy at work that has the COVID. He's in the hospital now. He's okay. In the ICU. Okay. I see you. It doesn't look good, and I don't know if he's saved or not. Okay. All right. Well, praise the Lord. There hasn't been any exposure, Richard. Praise God for that. Okay. And we've talked about that. I'm so grateful the Lord protected you. Yes, Sarah. Um, very similar to his story. My great uncle is in ICU. Um, he's got COVID. Now, you told me that earlier, but I didn't get his name. Robert Jones. Robert Jones. Okay. Keep Robert in prayer, dear ones. Okay. And keep Miss Flo in prayer as well, uh, and others that are part of the family. Who knows if any have been exposed? I don't think they actually know, but just keep that in prayer. All right. Uh, uh, and this is your uncle, your great uncle, yes. right? Okay. Yes. Go ahead, Tina. Um, prayer for my mom. Her health's been bad for over a year now, and I just pray she's gonna get better. And also. Um, John, prayer. Yes, go ahead. Anybody else? Connie Glass. Connie Glass. Okay, yes. Continue to keep Connie in prayer. It seems like she just about gets up and then she gets knocked down again. So <coughs> that seems like a lot of people's situations in recent days. All right, someone else? Can I hear the phrase? Yes, please. About three miles outside of Seaford, on the way to church tonight. 20 after 6. No, 20 after yeah, 6. A uh, motor fell off a chicken truck and I hit it with a right front tire and it blew the tire completely to pieces. And we were stopped on the side.
side of the road, thank God, nobody was hit, not so we didn't hit anybody. I got out my jack, a Mercedes Benz jack. <laughs> it would not work. Oh, so what am I going to do? I have to call Barry. Two young men. God, you pray, you see. God sent two young men racing in two different vehicles. They stopped, got us a jack, changed my tire. We were here at 10 minutes to 7. Amen. 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 That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Imagine he will, too. <laughs> That's awesome. At some point, he will. Go right ahead, Angie. All right, I actually have two. Yeah. The first one, um, I have a 21-year-old. Her name is Rebecca. And back in 2017, she joined the Navy. She, While she was there, I felt that she um, got away from God. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess I've been praying wrong. I've been praying that she would come back to church, but I guess my prayer is that she gets back to God. Yes. You know, yes. I guess I was praying wrong. So if we can just keep her in prayer, just and like Miss Fields know her, Oscar knows her, you know, Miss Faye knows her, Robin and the, you know Mr. Pinkine know her and stuff. And it's just you know she was brought up in church, went to a Christian school, and you know I thought I was doing right. I guess I failed somewhere because mm -hmm. you know she. Not well, Angie, you know how this works, don't you? You groan, he hears it. You groan, he hears it. The disposition of your heart is what is heard. There's no right Amen. now on prayer, honey, okay? Amen, that's right. You remember that, all right? It's not that. It's the disposition of the heart. And certainly, we can be in sin, and things will be awry with our prayer. But Angie, I don't think that's your situation. I think you understand, don't you, that the Lord will hear your prayer as long as your heart is in the disposition to obey. And so there's no right or wrong prayer. I tell you that. I, I felt the same way, though, girl. I, I'm right there with you. Uh, how many of you felt like you were praying wrong about something? Just know tonight you can't do that. <laughs> he hears you groan. He hears it. Amen. Bless his name. Anybody else? I another one. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I have a 17 year old niece who has a four month little girl, and her and her boyfriend are moving to California. Um, now, what is her name? Her name is Savannah. Okay. That's my sister's daughter. Certainly. And um, obviously, we don't want her to go because she's not. So you're saying this might be a wrong decision? I know it's a wrong decision. Okay. All right. We'll be praying, certainly. Yes. Someone else? All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Please remember the missionary force of First Baptist Church and also remember lost people. Okay, JR? Or uh, Travis? Pastor, I have one. Yes. Uh, for the last couple of days, um, Pastor Ryan and Molly and
watching on Facebook, coming for just to be ministering to you. Uh, through the word of God, and the Holy Spirit can bless and touch the Lord. Well, thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, Brother Jerry, just give us one, one uh, verse of that great song, and then we'll get right in the word, okay? All right. Let's stand together, everybody. All right, let's all stand. We'll sing, Jesus is all the world to me. Amen. Jesus is all the world to me, my life, my joy, my all. He is my strength from day to day, without Him I would fall. When I am sad to Him I go, no other Responses. 
Mm. How many of you know that responses are the worst? I mean, that's what makes a day the worst, is your response. Mm -hmm. It's not so much what happens, it's what you do about what happens. It's how you react to what happens. You know, the worst of things can happen. The sky can be falling, and if you say, Lord, it's all in your will. Amen. You hearing me now? It's all in your will. Oh, well, I guess this is what you want. Then you're going to have a great day. You know what I did today? Lord, why is this your will? <laughs> all day long. And you know what? That's what made my day so awful. Let's see what Jesus Christ did, how he reacted to things. Instead of blaming others or thinking about wrong things or concerning yourself with worry or having a lack of peace, number one, get up. All right? Get up! Amen. What did Jesus Christ do in verse 35? He got up. And what did it say? He got up a great while before it was day. day. All right? So the first couple of phrases of that verse are your first point. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day. All right? There you go. Just those two phrases. You understand that if you'll get up and get going, God will bless you. The first three verses that we're going to talk about, Miss Tina, you can be writing them down, all right? It's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 5 and 6. You don't have to put it up on the screen just yet, Tina. Just have it there and read it, okay? 1 Timothy chapter, pardon me, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 5 and 6. Second verse, Romans 13 and verse 11. Romans 13 and verse 11. Then Revelation chapter 3 and verses 2 and 3. Am I going too fast for you? <laughs> Revelation chapter 3. Just put R-E-V dot 3. Verses 2 and 3. All right. So you got 1 Thessalonians 5, 5 and 6. Romans 13, 11. And Revelation 3. Two and three. All right. Second point. We're just going to go right through the outline. I'm going to give you all the verses, and then we'll get the meat. All right? So what are we doing? We're building a skeleton, and then we're going to put all the meat on the skeleton, okay? <laughs> so let's start with the skeleton. Number two, get out. All right? Get out. So number one, what do you do? Get out. Get out. Number two, what do you do? Get out. Get out. All right, look at verse 35 again. In the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out. He went out, all right? Now, my friends, this is important for us. He departed into a solitary place. Amen. Now, if you start in verse 35, you're going to see these phrases that are all kind of attached together, and it could get kind of muddy for you. So you've got to be kind of listening up, okay? So here's number four, and it's attached. It's attached to point number two. So here's what we've got. Verse, the fourth verse, fourth verse, attached to point number two is Mark 16, 15 and 16. Mark 16, 15 and 16. All right? Here's verse number five. Attached to number two. Is everybody with me so far? Verse number five attached to point number two. Luke 10 and verse 19. Luke 10 and verse 19. Here's verse number six attached to point number two. Psalm 91 verse five. Okay? Psalm 91 and verse five. Okay, so first, what do we do? We get up. Oh, that was horrible. <laughs> what do we do first? We get up. Number two, we get out. Number three, we get 
Matthew 6 and verse 6. Number 8, Mark 11, verse 24. Mark 11 and verse 24. Everybody got those? Yeah. You got all seven of them? Eight of them now? Okay, good, good, good. Listen to this. First, we got to get up. up. Second, we got to get out. out. Third, we got to get alone. alone. And number four, we got to get praying. All right? Get praying. Get to praying. Don't just get alone, but get to praying. A whole lot of people want solitude. Oh, I'm in my fortress of solitude. <clears throat> But if you get so solitary that you're not including God, then you have a problem. You know what I'm saying? So get up, get out, get alone, and then get praying. Talk to your Lord. Talk to your God. And you'll see right there in verse 35 these three words. And there pray. You see? So what happened? In the morning, rising up, very while before day, he went out and departed in the solitary place, and there, pray. Say it with me. And there, pray. There you go. You're doing great. Excellent. Boy, I'll tell you what. I thought this would be a whole lot more confusing. Are you confused? No. Good. Number five. Get obeying. Get to obey. There are. For number four, your verses are these. And this is the ninth verse. For number four, John 15, 7. John 15, 7. All right? Tenth verse for number four. Tenth verse for number four, Luke 6 and verse 46. Luke 6 and verse 46. And then under get obeying, your last point. Here are, your, here are your verses. Just two verses. That's number 11 and number 12. Here you go. You ready? Jeremiah 29, 11 through 15. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 15. And then finally, 2 Corinthians 5, 6, and 8. Does anyone... Does that sound familiar to anyone? Yeah. Why? We just had it preached this Sunday. That's right. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verses 6 and 8. All right. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Let's go back all the way to the beginning of our outline, Tim, okay? Number one, get up. Get up. A moving train takes time to get rolling. Do you understand that? Amen. And so what has to happen is... Uh, I gotta get up early enough that I can get going. You know what I'm saying? The issue for us, oftentimes, with the will of God, is that we're behind in understanding Him. Can I say that again? What's the problem with the will of God? We get behind in understanding Him. And so, how do we understand it? Well, we've got to get up early enough to hear His voice. Move cautiously. Watch your tongue and relax. But you've got to get up early enough to let your mind be dead to self and alive to Jesus Christ. Look at 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 5 through 6, Tina. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verses 5 through 6. Whole outlines here in our idea start with this very important principle of getting up, First Thessalonians 5, and verses 5 through 6. He's putting it up. Yep. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We're not of the night, nor of darkness. So what is this saying? Get up. Get up! Look at verse 6 now. The word of God goes on. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Romans 13 and verse 11, Tina. Romans 13 and verse 11 is the word of God is giving us wisdom and understanding. Grab a hold of these and just write them down, even study them during the week. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation, neither then when we believe. What happens is this. Oftentimes, 
Are you hearing now? Oftentimes, we will be, again, I miss it, just, I'm just repeating myself. We will be behind with God. And that is the reason. What? We're not ready. We're not ready. What happens at 7.30 in the morning? What happens at 8 o'clock in the morning? Your first test. The kids are coming to the table and they're dirty and they stink and they've got problems and issues are going on and you're not ready for it. So what has to happen? You need to get up a great while before day and be with God. Get up. Look at Revelation 3 and verses 2 through 3. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. Have not found thy works perfect before God. Verse 3 then goes on and it says this. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard. Hold fast with them. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief. And thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. I'll tell you something. It's not just any day that's a problem. It's my whole life. If I'm behind in the things of God, I will be caught on the day that he comes back and what embarrassment there will be. Yeah. Hey, listen. Get up. Get up. Get up. Let's get going. Number two. Get out. Get out, my friends. Mark 16 and verses 15 through 16, Tina. And so Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barabbas unto them, and delivered Jesus when he had scourged him to be crucified. And verse 16 says this, very pointed verse. And the soldiers led him away into the hall, called Praetorium, and they called together the whole band. Now here is the issue with Mark chapter 16 and verses 15 through 16. I'm sorry if I gave that to you wrong. Mark 16 and verses 15 through 16. That's what I want to see here. Mark 16 and verse 15 through 16. Very well could have said it wrong. Very well could have said it wrong. Okay. There it is. There it is. All right. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Verse 16. Look at this now. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be dead. Now, whose fault is that? Well, it's theirs for not believing, but whose fault would it be if they never knew? Ours. Romans chapter, pardon me, uh, what am I thinking of? Hold on a second. Yes, Romans chapter 10 and verse 14 says that. Now, that's not one that you need to look up, Tina, but... Uh, it does say, how shall they hear unless there be a preacher? And so, my friends, listen. Get up and then do this. Do what you know you need to do so that later he'll tell you what he, you want to do. Let me say it again. Do what you know you need to do, and then later he'll tell you, he'll, he'll give you what you want to do. Now, what am I saying by that, Beverly? Listen, are you ready? Do you know you should be out witnessing? Yep. Amen. Amen. Do you know that? Amen. Well, then you don't need to pray about that will of God. Do Amen. You? No. That's right. But if you're doing what God's already asked you to do, then he'll give you the thoughts about what you desire to do. That's right. But you must be a moving train doing what he's already told you that you need to do. And what is one of the things he's already told us we need to do? Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Look at Matthew. Oh, pardon me, not Matthew, but Luke 10 and verse 19. Look at Luke 10 and verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I think it's very important to understand this. If you're doing what God desires for you to do, he's going to give you certain protections that you didn't expect. <laughs> Why? Because you're in the way. You're in the way. I can't help but think of that illustration Dad always gives. My father tells about a woman who has said, I've been in the way for 30 years. And somebody else yelled, yeah, we want you out of the way so the church can move forward. That sometimes is the case. But in this particular case, if you're in the way doing right, then God will speed you on your way. So what do you do first? You get up. And then you get out and you do what you know he already wants you to do. Don't let COVID-19 make you fear. Be cautious. But don't you dare let COVID-19 keep you from doing what God wants you to do. Amen. Why? Because this is just exactly what Satan's hoping for. 
Yep. That's right. That's he right. wants for people to say, oh, I can't do that, even though people used to be crucified and ripped apart for Jesus' name. I can't get out because I might get a sniffle or two. I might even die. My friends, don't threaten me with that. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Amen. Anybody with me on that? Amen. Amen. I'm going out to tell people about Jesus Christ because I don't care about death. I know a lot of people are worried about it. They're concerned about hell. They're concerned about eternity. Eternity? Bring it on. Amen. I'm excited about that. I tell you right now, is I, if I'm going to go out and witness to people and get COVID and end up in heaven, it may be a rough road ahead of me, but I'm ready to go. Amen. Are you ready with me? Yes. See, this is the issue. I'm not saying to be foolish. You see me wearing a mask tonight. You understand I'm trying to keep a distance. I think you ought to as well. I don't know if this church will end up with a case maybe in the future. Up to this point, we've been blessed beyond measure in this church. Not to have a single situation like that. But my friends, I will not let fear keep me from Amen. doing God's will. That's oh, right. Don't on. let it happen. Be cautious. Don't be, don't be silly. But let him have it. Make sure the train is headed in the right direction. Direction. Put Psalm 91 and verse 5 up there. It says this. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor by the arrow that flies by day. Just don't do it. This verse is my daughter-in-law's big verse right now. Sarah Seacrest. She had such fear and such concern about all kinds of things that were going on in our world. And she said, the Lord gave me that verse. Amen. And the Lord helped me understand. I don't need to be afraid of anything. God bless us for Amen. understanding that he alone can say he alone will protect. All right, so number one, get. Number two, get. Number three, get. Matthew 6 and verse 6. Matthew 6 and verse 6. But thou when thou prayest, Enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which is see, it seeth in secret shall reward thee, hope that heard. Many say, I get up, and I get with my kids, and I get with my wife, and I get with my friends. Listen, before you get with anyone, get with God. Get with him alone. Many want to pray with others. I understand that. That's great. I had Tim come, and we prayed together this morning, but Tim, long before I was with you, Thank the Lord I was with God. I tell you, it was a brief, brief time. I wish it had been a lot longer this morning because I wasn't ready. And they prayed, the word of God tells us. God, praise the Lord. He just prayed. God, he got up early. <laughs> he got alone with God. Hmm. All right? And he was out, man. He was out. And that's, I think, what we need to understand. The importance of being where? Out. Isaiah 54 and verse 17 says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen. You can write that one down. Isaiah 54 and verse 17, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Number four now. Get to up. Pray. So number one, get where? Uh -huh. Up. Number two, Beverly, get. Out. Number three, get. Alone. alone. Number four, get, get to pray. John 15 and verse 7, what does the word say? John 15 and verse 7. You missed one. Oh, I'm sorry. Mark 11, 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things shall be desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. My friends, what an important thing to know. I have promised from God that if you're living, now listen, if you're living right, get that. My Bible tells us, Peter speaking, that if I'm treating my wife wrong, my prayers will be discussed. My prayers will be uh, taken uh, apart. My prayers will be, all of my desires will be thwarted if I'm doing what's wrong in that. So friends, treat her right. Treat others right. Live right by God's grace and in His power. Certainly you can't do it on your own. How long have I prayed? Am I at rest? You know the old timers used to say this. Old times, what did they use the word? Praying through, you know. I'm not telling you that that particular phrase needs to be understood like some of them understood. But I do tell you this. If your times with God are long and healthy, there's a problem. Hmm. If you haven't gotten to a point 
where there is complete peace in your heart. Keep praying. If you haven't gotten to a point where you feel like the problem is solved, keep praying, Sarah. Keep praying, Michael. Say, oh, don't let it stop. Hold on to God. The Word of God tells us that Jacob held on to that Lord of his. And I said, I will not let you go until you bless me, oh God. Amen. And if that's your case, oh dear ones, keep on going. Keep on going. Don't you quit praying. Keep on going until the Lord does what he's promised he would do. Of course, he does great things if we continue with him. If we'll continue with him. Did we do John 15, 7? No. All right, here we go. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will. And it shall be done. Yes. Yes. Number five and last. Get to obeying. Look at Luke 6 and verse 46. Yeah, Luke 6 and verse 46. Yeah, there you go. And why call ye me Lord? And do not think which I say. What is the deal with you? What is the issue? Why is it that you say, you're my God? And yet you just continue in your sin. How can we ever expect that he is going to listen to us if we continue in thoughtless disobedience. You know how to get peace? You know how to have thoughts of peace? You know how to have thoughts of joy and, and, and great relaxation in your life? Yeah. Obey God! Yeah. Any child will tell you that. Because they're scared to death they're going to find out what they're doing wrong. <laughs> and it's the same with us. Isn't it? Tell me if that's not the case. Amen. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Says this, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, say the Lord, thoughts of peace, not evil, to give you expected end. Verse 12 goes on and says this, then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, I will hearken unto you. Man, I want that. Do you desire that? Go on to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 16, if you will. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 6. The Word of God is so clear on these issues. Oh, dear ones. Why don't we just get to a point where we can be confident in Him? Therefore, we are always confident knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. And then verse 8 goes on and it says, you just go on if you will. That's right. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Why do I not fear COVID-19? It's because I know as soon as I'm gone from this body, I'm in the presence of God. And if it be that I'm living a life that is pure before him, or at least allowing him, seeking to allow him to work through me. I'm not going to stand before him ashamed. By God's grace, I'll be standing before him confident, saying to him, oh Lord God, give me your wisdom, your help, peace, patience, long-suffering, all the fruit of the Spirit, the perfect will of God, do this. Get up. Get out. Get alone. Get and get obeyed. Father, thank you so much for your people. Give them a good night in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.